Welcome to another session of uh, Dentistry and More. So today we will be speaking about how to record a case history according to an old medicine and radiology perspective. So the definition of case history, as we know, the def it is defined as a planned professional conversation that enables a patient to communicate his or her symptoms, feelings or fears to the clinician to obtain an insight of the patient's illness and the attitude of the patient. So in case history, uh, we have this kind of a meticulous kind of a format where we have to contemplate the patient's symptoms as well as uh, record their uh, examination and then finally uh, draw a diagnosis and formulate a treatment plan accordingly. So how do we go about in the case history recording? First and foremost is the demographic da data or the bio data of the patient that is the patient's name, age and gender. So each of these titles have their one on all significance wherein age related diseases can be uh, seen in according to the age that has been mentioned by the patient and the gender related kind of a disease that is the female patients or the male patients what all are the diseases that can be seen accordingly and then the address the proof of the address is required because if any of these endemic kind of diseases can be seen such as that of uh, like uh, you have fluorosis so according to the address itself we can identify whether there's a fluoridated area or not so that is why the importance of address is notified over here then we have op number of the patient the patient's op number such that if in case the patient is having a similar name that is two patients are having a similar name so according to this op number we can identify the difference between the other two so uh, for that reason, we'd notify the OP number. Then we have the date when did the patient uh, come into the clinic. So that is being notified and also occupation. Occupation can be written under the demographic data or else in the personal history later on that we'll be, uh, we'll be speaking about. So this is how uh, we are formulating the uh, case history. That is first and foremost, the chief complaint. So according to the chief company, you should pay, uh, mention according to the patient's own words. So we have three parts of a body of a chief company. That is, first is the symptom that we have to speak about and in which side or the site they have preferably seen that symptom. And the third part of the body of that uh, chief complaint is that you have to speak about the duration. So example when I'm citing, if suppose a patient is having pain, you're not supposed to mention that which side according to your tooth number okay because the patient does, doesn't know the tooth number as such so we have to mention it according to what patient is describing so that is suppose you have your patient is having a uh, three six caries is there so or pain is there so you will describe it as the patient is complaining of uh, pain in the left lower back tooth since how, how many days has been mentioned that should be mentioned over here itself so then next you have the history of presenting illness. So in the history of presenting illness, we are going to elaborate about the uh, symptom. So here in this history of uh, presenting illness, you are going to uh, describe about the characteristics of that symptom. So here I have described about a pain. So pain, there are some nine characteristics that you have to mention in the history of presenting illness. Already you mentioned the location as well as the duration. So the next part you are going to describe is about the mode of onset whether it has been found to be sudden or is it uh, you know gradually in onset that you are supposed to describe here then the uh, next part is the type of the pain that has been seen that is whether it is a pricking kind of a pain or a sharp kind of a pain shooting kind of a pain dull aching all those kind of types of pain that you have to describe next is the severity of the pain the severity of the pain that is whether it is uh, uh, how is the intensity of the pain that is whether it is severe, mild, moderate in intensity that is what you have to describe over here next we have to speak about the, whether it is continuous or is it intermittent and next after that is the you have to describe whether it is confined to that area or is it being radiated towards the other structures so that is whether it is localized or radiating to the other anatomical structures as such then we have the aggravating factors and the relieving factors where for what reason is it being aggravated is it being aggravated doing while kind of any activity such as that of mastication or any chewing habit or uh, some while chewing your food as such or even if it is like aggravating while lying down at night times 
so that has to be described over here and then the relieving factors that is how is it being relieved sometimes it relieves on its own or by taking medication as such and then we have the next part of it whether there's kind of this kind of history of pain was there previously so sometimes a patient might come back to you stating that the pain at that point of time was mild that is when they had this pain at that point they, it was very mild and so they had uh, uh, it was uh, kind of uh, relieved by taking any medication or by do, uh, some, uh, doing some kind of a treatment when they have uh, uh, met the do doctor as such for you know kind of medications must have been prescribed as such so that is when it must have got relieved and now suddenly again the pain there has been aggravated and it is also uh, the pain is so severe that they want to get it treated so then you have to mention about the previous history of pain also as elaborated the characteristics how it was back then that also should be described over here under this history of presenting illness and if there is any intervention or any treatment that has been done previously that also should be mentioned over here in the, under the history of presenting illness so next is the medical history under this medical history you can speak about four parts in the medical history that is what are the diseases that the patient is having that is suppose patient might be having some cardiac history or maybe patient is hypertensive diabetic or even they have kind of epileptic seizures and all those things so that you have to mention the medical condition that has been seen since when have they noticed it that also should be mentioned the next part to this question that is you have to ask about the drug history that is if the patient is having any medical condition then the drug definitely they must be taking it so that also you should mention and since when they have been taking that medication and also if you can ask the patient and elaborate what are the medications or if they have the prescription along with them that should be described over here in this medical history then the next is the history of any allergy towards any drugs that should be mentioned over here and even the enlist all those drugs that they are allergic about and the fourth part of the medical history that you ask is the previous history of any hospitalization any recent hospitalization that is past 6 months back if they have been hospitalized for any reason and for what that should be described under the medical history so these are the four parts that you should mention in the medical history that is medical condition next is the drug they have been taking and the third part is the any drug allergies then the fourth part is the recent hospitalization so next is the personal history under the personal history you are asking about their any details regarding to their uh, personal as an attitude that is the um, diet or the bowel and the bladder habits sleep and appetite definitely when the patient is having pain it will be disturbed the sleep will be disturbed and they will have loss of appetite all that should be mentioned under this personal history and under personal history you have the habit history as such habits can be classified into two that is you have the adverse habits as well as the deleterious habits please make a note that these two are totally different adverse habits that is it causes adverse effects that is smoking and pan chewing uh, beetle chewing habit as well as alcohol consumption all these are coming under the adverse habits deleterious habits meaning it is like deliberately doing they are doing this habit that is deliberately done so this deleterious habits are nothing other than your thumb sucking your nail biting all those tongue thrusting mouth breathing all those comes under the deleterious habits then comes the brushing history that is a how does the patient brush their teeth whether it is vertically or horizontally or uh, uh, and how many times they brush their teeth in, in a day and with what are the uh, brushing aids that is the dental aids that they are using so that all should be mentioned under the brushing habit or the brushing history then same goes here in the frequency and duration is according to the brushing habits what are the uh, some, whatever habits they have that is uh, let it be frequency duration and that is mentioned over here is nothing than only for the brushing habit as well as the uh, adverse habits that they are uh, undergoing that is smoking how many packets of cigarettes or how many cigarettes did they consume consume and uh, some uh, per day how many how many do they consume it and for how many uh, years they have been con uh, consuming it all those history that should be mentioned under the frequency and duration next goes about the family history the family history here we are speaking about the patient's family history that is the patient's mother or the 
father or even their maternal or the paternal grandparents if they have any medical history that should be mentioned over here since when they have been having that medical condition and for how long they have been uh, taking any medication if possible even endless the drugs that they have been taking it so remember the family history it's all about their past fam family history that is their parents history as well as their um grandparents history that is what you are supposed to speak even if the siblings also sometimes like in the case of uh, amelogenesis imperfecta and all those cases like uh, even dentinogenesis imperfecta since they have a genetic predilection so you can ask about the siblings history also in this so you can mention here if in case the patient is having any history uh, of the same uh, you know discoloration of the tooth and all those things uh, according to the siblings history that you should mention over here in the family history itself and next is the past dental history past dental history is nothing other than when did the patient visit a dental surgeon and for what treatment did they undergo and if it was an eventful or an uneventful uh, episode that you should be mentioned over here in the past dental history pernicious oral habits that i've already mentioned in the under the personal history itself so you can uh, speak pernicious oral habits or the uh, deleterious habits are enlisted over here so that you can mention on the, under the personal history itself next is a general physical examination uh, in the general examination you have to uh, notify the patient's uh, height weight how is their posture whether they are standing erect or not that should be mentioned here and also the belt and the nourishment followed by gait gait is nothing other than how the patient is walking towards this and when you come when the patient enters the clinical setup how do the patient walk is it normal that you should mention if it is not you should mention the gait as such that is uh, there are different types of gait such as the waddling gait you have the parkinsonian gait uh, uh, all th those have to be mentioned under the uh, heading and gait next is the most important part that you must have studied even general medicine also when you are uh, when you have studied about the case history taken in the uh, in general medicine you have must have come across these terminologies that is pallor icterus clubbing cyanosis and edema so remember this mnemonic that is pickle p i c c l e that is pallor icterus clubbing cyanosis lymphadenopathy and edema so in pallor as the name suggests paleness okay so that is if there is any paleness on the on the skin or the mucous membrane especially it is notified in the lower palpable conjunctiva so it is caused due to anemia so th that is to be notified and if it is present or absent that you should mention do here in pallor icterus is nothing other than a yellowish discoloration that you see in the skin or the mucous membrane in jaundice cases and in that you have to mention it over here and how do you check for icterus you check icterus you check in the upper sclera of the eye or you check for the uh, upper bulbar conjunctiva and here next we have the cyanosis in cyanosis it's nothing other than a bluish discoloration that you see on the skin which is caused due to the accumulation of methemoglobin that is due to a decreased in the oxygen saturation levels that you see in the blood supply so what happens in the blood supply you have in the blood you have the hemoglobin that is a pigment that is seen in the blood rbcs especially so here, here what happens is that the hemoglobin tries to combine with the oxygen so when once the oxygen carrying capacity has been reduced what happens is the other uh, molecules that is the carbon monoxide and the carbon dioxide combines with hemoglobin and once that accumulation or the com combination of this uh, kind of uh, car carboxy hemoglobin happens it is when your by product methemoglobin has been formed so this methemoglobin gives the bluish tint for the skin so that is when you see cyanosis and there are lot of, uh, there are two types of cyanosis that is the central cyanosis and the peripheral cyanosis as the name suggests central cyanosis meaning it is caused due to any systemic diseases whereas the peripheral cyanosis it is caused or seen around the peripheries especially in the extremities that is your fingertips as well as the toes and the nails toe nails as such so next you have uh, the clubbing in that clubbing it is nothing other than a bulbous kind of an enlargement that is seen around the nail beds so the, the question that can be asked during the viva sessions is that how do you check for clubbing so there's a scam scamots window test wherein you place your two fingers that is the 
uh, two fingers have been placed uh, apart one another and what you can see is that if in case you see a diamond shaped kind of uh, space that means that if the light is able to pass through the diamond uh, through your nail beds it indicates that there is an absence of clubbing if in case it is being closed there is no space as such it indicates that there is clubbing so and another test is the Loewenberg's angle Loewenberg's angle it su suggests that if it is found to be greater than 160 degrees or 180 it suggests that there is clubbing so that is when you see you detect for any uh, kind of and bulbous enlargement that is seen around the nail bed then you indicate that there is a clubbing present lymphadenopathy that you can discuss even in the uh, clinical examination under that uh, you are have, having the lymph nodes that have been enlarged as such then you can mention that there is presence of lymphadenopathy <coughs> next is the edema edema under this general physical examination edema what do you check for is that if there is any accumulation of fluid in the uh, any uh, subcutaneous tissues or the interstitial uh, tissue spaces so how do you check for edema especially in the pedal edema we check around the anterior medial malleolar region of the leg so there are two types of edema that is a pitting and the non pitting edema so in the pitting edema how do you check is that when you are trying to palpate your fingers across that area and you relieve from that area what happens is that there is this kind of a ditch that has been formed around that area even after relieving it indicates that there is edema, uh, as in there is this fu uh, fuel that is accumulated around the spaces over there so it indicates that there is edema present so that is when you mention that if it is present or not under the heading of edema vital signs the vital signs is nothing other than your pulse rate your blood pressure that has been measured as well as the respiratory rate cycle and the temperature so if any of, the, of these four uh, indicatives are found to be abnormal that should be mentioned under the vital signs next moving on to the clinical examination under clinical examination you have the extra oral examination extra oral it means that it is outside your mouth so extra oral examination you have the head in the head you have the uh, shape and the size where you can mention whether if it is a normal size then you can mention that it is a mesocephalic or a normal cephalic so uh, i think even in ortho you must have studied about the cephalic index there is this kind of a ratio for that if in case it falls in the normal parameters then you can mention that it is a normal cephalic or a mesocephalic head next is the facial symmetry that you can see that if patients are having any swelling cases definitely there will be a facial asymmetry so you have to check bilateral symmetry whether the patient is found to be normal or not both the sides of the face are found to be normal then you can mention that there is a facial symmetry seen next is the jaws if there is any kind of uh, uh, what do you say there is kind of a de deformation or anything then you can mention that is a which side of the jaw the deformation is seen that has been notified over here skin is there any pigmentation or any kind of discoloration that is seen then you can mention under the skin heading tmj i have already taken the, a session about how to do the examination for tmj as well as the uh, muscles of mastication in that if there is kind of any abnormalities that you should mention it and suppose in muscles of mastication if you are seeing the right side the masseter is found to be tender then you should indicate that the right side of the masseter muscle is found to be tender as such all those things that can be mentioned under these headings lymph nodes if at all when you are trying to palpate if it is found to be tender or enlarged that you should be mentioned over here and you have to specify which side of the lymph node that is if it is a right side the submandibular lymph node is palpable that you should mention it so uh, in the lymph node examination i have already taken a session for that you can go through in that next is the intraoral examination in the intraoral examination it is divided into the uh, two parts that is a soft tissue as well as a hard tissue examination so in the first you start off with the soft tissue examination the soft tissue examination you have all the parts of the uh, oral mucosa that is the vermilion border you have the uh, labial mucosa buccal mucosa floor of the mouth tongue vestibule salivary gland orifices as well as the palate so under this heading what do you do is that if you find anything abnormal please uh, have a take mark for those and then you have to explain in that region or uh, write in detail about the examination of the lesion that you are seeing in perspective to that site so here in the examination of specific lesion in detail you have to write in detail about it that is you have to speak about under the headings that is inspection and palpation 
suppose you are seeing a case of a leukoplakia okay so this patient who is having a uh, this kind of a cracked mud kind of an appearance whitish appearance that you are seeing on the right side so you have to explain in detail like this that is inspection and palpation under the inspection if it is right about the notify the presence of a whitish black cracked mud like appearance that is seen on the right buccal mucosa which is measuring about what is the size of that that is the antero posterior as well as the supra inferior diameters that should be mentioned and then you have to mention it uh, corresponding to which teeth that is uh, that buccal mucosa is uh, seen the site is seen corresponding to these teeth so suppose i am saying in the right side it is corresponding to the 4 6 4 7 4 8 3 okay and then you are supposed to mention about the antero posterior uh how is the extensions that is antero posterior how is the extensions as well as the supra inferior extensions followed by how the uh, overlying mucosa is seen that is you should you can you are seeing that the white there is a plaque like lesion as well as there is a crack mud appearance that is seen in the overlying mucosa that should be mentioned under that heading and how is the surrounding mucosa whether it is pigmented or whether it is, is there any other kind of discoloration or any pigmentation that is seen that should be mentioned under this heading so followed by the palpation once you palpating for the lesion you have to palpate how is it whether it's scrapeable or non scrapeable or is there any kind of uh, consistency differences there that should be mentioned over here under palpation as well as you can mention that whether it is tender or non tender so this is how you describe under the examination of specific lesion in detail in regard to the uh what do you say if you see any kind of lesions that are seen in respect to any soft tissues next under the uh, soft tissue examination is that we have the gingiva so in the gingiva you have to speak about the status that is the perianal status or the gingival status so in that you have where the patient is found to be having any stains or calculus that should be mentioned and under the gingival status you have these um headings that is a bleeding on probing then you have um consistency color color that is you, you know that the normal color is found to be coral pink in color the gingiva if there is any kind of inflammation that definitely will be appearing reddish then you have the um consistency that is when you are trying to palpate around the um uh, attached gingiva as such you will find that it is found to be normally it is found to be firm and resilient if there is kind of abnormalities or if there is any inflammation that will be found to be soft and edematous next is the contour contour that you see in the gingiva is found to be scalloped so if there is any kind of recession cases definitely there will be loss of scalloping so that should be mentioned under that and then followed by the surface texture that is is there any stippling or not stippling if it is present it indicates that it is a normal gingiva or it is found to be a, a good gingival status whereas if there is a lo loss of stippling then definitely it indicates that there is a inflammation for that region so these all are the head headings that you should mention under gingival status next we have the bleeding on probing when you are trying to probe or walk the probe across the uh, marginal gingiva then you will see that if there is bleeding points that are seen then you have to mention that in which side you are seeing the uh, bleeding on probing as such that should be specified under the head, under the setting and then next is the all related to the periodontal status that is periodontitis conditions can be related to these if these findings are to be seen that is if there is periodontal pockets that are observed if there is any kind of um this kind of gingival recession that has been seen so then you can state that there is periodontitis so it how to differentiate from the localized and the generalized periodontitis so the localized and the generalized periodontitis you are going to find the difference that is by the notifying that how many teeth have been affected if it is found to be uh, equal or more than 30% of the affected teeth then it is stating that it is generalized periodontitis uh, if it is less than that then it is a localized periodontitis and you should mention specify each number number of the teeth in your diagnosis next about your uh, periodontal status is, that is your you spoken about the periodontal pockets in the gingival recession as well as a furcation in one if you are seeing that there is any kind of uh, a uh, furcation that due cause due to recession itself you will see that there that is this kind of a uh, furcation that is involved or the furcation can be seen in respect to the teeth that is a posterior itself so when you are trying to uh, use a neighbor's probe when your neighbor's probe is passing across the 
perforation area then you can mention that the, in relation to these teeth the perforation has been involved next is the heart tissue examination that's a sub heading under the intraoral examination heart tissue examination you have to mention about the number of teeth present or the missing teeth followed by the wasting diseases such as that of attrition abrasion erosion if it is notified that it should be mentioned if you are seeing any enamel hyperplasia cases that is any chalky white appearances or any discolorations that are seen on the labial surface or the buccal surface that should be specified under this heading followed by the next part of the periodontal status that is the mobility mobility is been checked under under the heart tissue examination so you have the grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 if it has been notified that should be mentioned under this and followed by the occlusion how is the patient biting that is whether it's the angles class 1 class 2 or the class 3 molar relation or if the molars are not there then you go for the canine relation and the Simon's classification you can go through if that you should mention it under occlusion so in this you can see that there is a tooth numbers and also in according to this in this tooth numbering you can see that the surfaces this is the buccal aspect this is the palatal aspect in 2 6 where i pointed out this is the mesial as well as the distal this is the occlusion if you're seeing any decay in that that you should specify and mention it accordingly to which surface it is seen and then if there's any fracture or as such that you have to in indicate it if there's any root stem or crowns or bridges that has been notified restorations or okay, as, as such that you should mention it over here under this gross examination that you're taking so this is the permanent teeth and you can see here this is the primary teeth and under the heart tissue examination itself again you can see uh, check for if there is any dentures that has been placed so if there is dentures placed that you should mention it over here how is the denture whether it is the retention and the stability how is it whether it is good or poor that you should mention over here finally after that you come to the draw the diagnosis that is you are going to uh, draw the diagnosis based on your patient symptoms as well as the examination that you've been inspected through your a uh, clinical examination as well as a local examination uh, then you have to finally uh, draw a provisional diagnosis based highly on the clinical perspective only then there's something called as a differential diagnosis differential diagnosis is nothing other than the differences that you can see that is uh, in case you have diagnosed a case of um, tooth where it is found to be uh, local examination you have seen that there is this kind of a deep carious lesion as well as there is this kind of uh, uh, tenderness on vertical percussion then you give a provisional diagnosis of an apical periodontitis for that tooth but what you are trying to differentiate from that is that sometimes this apical periodontitis when you are trying to try take a radiograph it can be seen that it is, uh, it, is go it has gone to the next stage that is the periapical abscess so you can give a differentiating diagnosis as chronic periapical abscess that is there are certain points that are similar that is you can see that there is a deep carious lesion there is also this uh, what do you say in chronic periapical abscess cases sometimes there will be a tenderness of vertical percussion as such but when you are trying to uh, see that uh, through radiographically there is this kind of a difference where there is a lesion that is seen around the periapical region so that is the differentiating feature where from that of the apical periodontitis so that is when you draw, draw a differential diagnosis that that is you can say that it can be even this condition so that is when you draw formulate a differential diagnosis over here so under investigations you have the radiographic examination you have the pulp vitality test or the vital vitality test then the hematological test biopsies biochem uh, biochemical examination and all all these come under this investigation so radiographically suppose like i've mentioned earlier that you are taking a radiograph that is an interval periapical radiographs as such you have to mention the radiographic examination elaborated as such and uh, according to that what is the radiographic diagnosis that you've got based on the radiograph that you should mention it in this invest under this investigation then you have the other vitality test such as that of if there is any uh, uh, you are checking for any uh, dyes that vital dyes that has been placed for checking whether there is any lesion as such present that is whether there is any pre-malignant uh, cells as such then you are supposed to mention it under this vitality 
test he had the vital staining test also that is to uh, indicate whether the patient is having the lesion with the premalignant cells or not so to sub, uh, differentiate that we are, uh, this is kind of a vital stains that have been used so if the vital stain has been taken up and then you see that uh, it has been indicating of any premalignant cells that you should mention it over here under the vital staining test that is an, another chair side investigation and then you have the pipe, pulp vitality test wherein you check whether the electric pulp testers are not so if there is found to be a non-vital or a vital pulp that should be mentioned under the pulp vitality test hematological there is a blood examination that has been seen the routine blood checkup if any kind of abnormalities are notified then you should notify it over here and biochemistry test that is such as any biochemical analysis has been done that should be mentioned over here that is if you are taking a serum um, calcium levels or serum, serum uh, parathormon tests and all those are indicative under the biochemistry and then biopsies that is any incisional or excisional biopsies that have been taken what is the uh, histological diagnosis that has been drawn that should be mentioned under this heading so based on all of this that is the clinical examination as well as investigatory diagnosis you draw a final diagnosis so based on this final diagnosis we formulate a treatment plan so under this treatment plan we check for prognosis that is whether the condition or the patient's uh, a medical that is a dental um, condition has been uh, progressively been treated well or not so that is when you uh, speak about the prognosis and based on the treatment plan we refer to each department so we have to mention first is the complaint that is an emergency treatment has been considered so that should be the first treatment plan that has been to be given or refer referral to that department should be given to so always the emergency phase and then followed by the restorative and the prophylactic phase should be done. So this is how you go about for a uh, case history recording. In some case scenarios that is like um, for the exam point of view even case summary is to be elaborated. That is at the end of this after all you have done you have done your treatment plan and you have drawn your treatment plan formulated that and then you have gone through the prognosis and referral and all those things you have to mention about the case summary. Case summary is nothing other than you have to summarize the case that is from the start till the end that is how what, for what reason the patient has come to the uh, department. So you have to start off patient has come to the department of uh, oral medicine and radiology with the chief complaint of so and so and then describe about the history of presenting illness all those things and then the examination and then the provisional diagnosis was drawn as such then when on radiographic examination what are the positive findings okay those things has to be mentioned over here rather than you're speaking about the normal findings okay so what are the abnormal findings that you've seen that all should be written under the case summary so you have to summarize it in uh, such a way that all these findings have been inclusive into that and then you have to mention about the final diagnosis and how what is the treatment plan that has been indicated for that patient so with that you are ending the case history format for the under the um, oral medicine and radiology perspective so thank you